ideal gas in a gravitational field. An ideal gas at the absolute temperature T is an equilibrium in the presence of a gravitational field described by an acceleration G in the downward or minus Z direction. The mass of each molecule is M. Use the canonical distribution in its classical form to find the probability PRP d cube R d cube P that a molecule has a position between R and R plus dr and a momentum between P and P plus dp. So the first thing to do in order to write the canonical distribution is to find its energy. So we can represent this molecule here uh, at this, as this point. So um, let's have the molecule here. It has a momentum vector p and it is at a certain distance z from ground. So this is uh, z. And um, let's say that this is the point where it hits the ground, basically. That's point O. So how do I write the energy of this molecule? The energy of one molecule I can write as epsilon equals P squared over 2M, its kinetic energy plus its potential energy, mgz, because it's in a gravitational field, g. Now, the classical canonical distribution tells me the following. If you have a position uh, coordinates uh, q1, q2 to q final, and momentum coordinates q, uh, p1, p2 to p final, the probability distribution function for all coordinates from q1 to pf, uh, dq1 to dpf, so all chord positions and momenta uh, components are in a range, is given by uh, a constant c times the exponential uh, minus beta the energy of the molecule, epsilon, which is a function of q1 to pf, dq1 to dpf. Okay, now if I apply this uh, to this problem, uh, so I, I'm in th a three-dimensional uh, space, so the probability distribution function of r and p for r in the range uh, r to r plus dr vector, or x is in the range x to x plus dx, y, y to y plus dy, etc. And the momenta, d cube p, momentum components. This is a constant c times exponential e to the minus beta epsilon, which is a function of position vector and momentum vector d cube r d cube p uh, now if i apply it to this problem i can write the uh, also the probability distribution for uh, the z being in the range z to z plus dz at and momentum vector p being in the range p to p plus dp, uh, this will be given by c times e to the minus beta uh, p squared over 2m plus mgz, which is its uh, energy, dz d cube p. So I can write it uh, this way, or uh, I could also write this as uh, p of r and p because it has no dependence on x and y. So uh, I note that uh, this probability distribution function 
will be uh, greater or equal to zero when z is greater or equal to zero and it is zero for z less than zero so basically that's the range of z's i'm concerned with and if i consider uh, the integration over all possible p values so integration over px py pz all possible values from uh, 0 to infinity and uh, if I consider all possible so it could be from minus infinity to the plus infinity so minus infinity to plus infinity and if I consider all possible z values from 0 to z so this is for the z integral if I have probability distribution function dz d cubes z. Uh, p so momentum can take any value z can take any value between uh, zero and infinity this will be equal to one so that is basically my normalization uh, condition so this gives the value of c so basically my probability distribution function uh, for r p d cube r d cube p will be proportional to e to the minus beta uh, p squared over 2m plus mg z d cube r d cube p Now let's take a look at part B. Uh, so why was I able to write it this way? Because the dz and uh, dy uh, components do not have any contribution. Uh, so you can see I can equivalently write this as uh, x can have any value and y can have any value, but z takes values between uh, z to z plus dz. Uh, or, or uh, I can have x in a range and y in a range doesn't matter because the proportionality uh, is with the Boltzmann factor that includes the z in it. Now in part b find to within a tri trivial constant of proportionality the probability uh, p prime b d cube b that a molecule has a velocity in a range irrespective of its position. Compare this result with the corresponding probability in the absence of a gravitational field. So in part B, uh, I want to obtain uh, the velocity distribution. So probability of having a velocity in the range V to D cube, uh, V to V plus dV. Uh, so this we can obtain by integrating the corresponding probability distribution p of r p uh, d cube r d cube p over all space so we, we will integrate this over all space so this will allow us to write probability distribution for having a momentum between p to p plus dp this is the integral uh, over all space probability of rp uh, d cube r so i integrate this over all possible r values uh, d cube p uh, and this has to be normalized so uh, this will be an integral over all r and p values probability distribution R P D cube R D cube P. So if I'll take a look at this, uh, I have uh, the momentum dependent factor that is e to the minus beta P squared over 2m uh, that comes out of the integral D cube P. But then I have the integral uh, over uh, all possible z values 0 to infinity 
e to the minus beta mgz dz uh, divided by the integral over all possible momenta e to the minus beta p squared over 2m uh, d cube p uh, multiplied by the integral from 0 to infinity uh, this is from minus infinity to plus infinity uh, I can have e to the minus uh, beta mgz dz so note that uh, this integral on the left side is a triple integral so normally I should write uh, three integration signs here but I'm using this uh, shorthand notation to indicate that there is only uh, an uh, the integration limits are between minus infinity and plus infinity. I can have all possible components for the momentum. But for the z component, it has to be between zero and infinity. That's where the potential energy is defined. Okay, so uh, I can see that this integral of over z will uh, cancel. And uh, the integral at the bottom will give me just a constant. So basically, I can write this uh, integral. Uh, so let me call this um, constant c prime. So this integral becomes c prime e to the minus beta p squared over 2m d cube p. So that is the probability distribution for momentum, irrespective of the position. Now I can substitute p is equal to mv, and therefore d cube p will be equal to m cube d cube v. So uh, the probability distribution for the velocity uh, will be another constant, c double prime, e to the minus beta mv squared over 2 d cube v. It's a different constant because I have this additional m cube factor here. So I will find that the probability distribution function, which was denoted by uh, p prime here, p prime v uh, d cube v over all possible velocity, components is proportional to e to the minus beta mv squared over 2 d cube v. Now does this result change whether I have a, a gravitational field or not? You can see that because these uh, the, the z integrals uh, cancel, so since the z integrals uh, cancel uh, the result is the same is the same when the gravitational acceleration is zero so this is irrespective of uh, having a value of gravitational acceleration that is non-zero or not now part c Find to within a trivial constant of proportionality the probability p z d z that a molecule is located uh, at a height between z and d plus z irrespective of its velocity or its location in space. Okay, so now uh, in part c, uh, so I go back to the um, probability distribution function for a momentum and position uh, d cube p uh, d cube r and I want to go to uh, just the probability distribution that includes z values between z and z plus dz irrespective of uh, momentum and x and y values so I integrate over all possible x and y values I integrate over all possible p values so x and so these integrals are all from minus infinity to plus infinity they can take any value in this range uh, x e to the minus beta uh, p squared over 2m plus mgz the integration is on 
uh, a triple integral of momentum and dx uh, dy but I'd, I'm not doing an integral over z here so dz remains outside so this is going to be um, because I have e to the minus beta p squared uh, sorry e to the minus beta mgz dz that doesn't belong to this integral uh, plus so I have the integrals here that give me a number so this is going to be a, a constant c double prime e to the minus beta mgz dz so the probability distribution for having a z value in the range z to z plus dz is e to the minus beta mgz dz so uh, we have look, starting from the uh, general probability distribution for having classical coordinates uh, QIs and PIs in a certain range the probability distribution function multiplied by uh, DQIs and DPIs is uh, given by the canonical distribution it's proportional to e to the minus beta epsilon uh, multiplied with the range the epsilon is a function of position and uh, momentum coordinates now uh, in order to find uh, the distribution uh, the, the classical canonical distribution all I have to do is calculate the energy the energy of one molecule is P squared over 2m kinetic energy plus mgz potential energy so if you substitute this into this um, general form you find the probability of having a, a, val a value of r and p in a range r to r plus dr and p to p plus dp uh, vectorially so this is e to the minus beta energy d cube r d cube p now in part b we wanted to obtain the velocity distribution uh, irrespective of position so i integrate the probability distribution over all possible positions and i'm left with uh, a constant times e to the minus beta p squared over 2m now I realize that the momentum and velocity are related, p is equal to mv. So all I have to do is substitute for d cube p, m cube d cube v, which is uh, giving me another constant. So the probability distribution is uh, proportional to e to the minus beta mv square over 2 d cube v. And I don't have any contribution from the z part here. So uh, the z integrals cancel. So the answer is the same irrespective of having a velocity having a gravitational acceleration now what is the probability of finding the molecule in a certain z range there i have to integrate my uh, general probability distribution over all possible x's and y's and also over all possible momenta uh, but uh, remaining part is only z so if i integrate this over all possible uh, x's and y's of course uh, uh, I have to uh, mention that this has to be uh, normalized so there is uh, a normalization here so you have to also divide this by the integration over all x y z and p of the probability distribution So you, uh, that's your normalization so that your x and y integrals will be basically cancel so you will be left with uh, the momentum integral uh, giving you uh, an, a constant uh, and so that's momentum integrals will remain and e to the minus beta mgz dz is not integrated so that remains outside so the probability distribution is proportional to e to the minus beta mgz dz so <clears throat> we have to make sure that when we are calculating the probabilities we consider the normalization condition and uh, in that case um, for example in part a we found this constant c by looking at the integration over all possible p uh, and 
R values and or Z values, uh, this gives us uh, the normalization condition. So this, uh, the same thing applies in part B. You see we had to integrate over all R and P in order to calculate the probability distribution for uh, P. Uh, the, the Z parts cancel. The, uh, the X and Y integrals actually also cancel here, right? So I haven't written them explicitly, but they also cancel. Uh, and for this, the same thing applies to part C. So uh, we obtain the probability distribution uh, e to the minus beta mgz dz when we cancel the integrals that contain x and y uh, and all the p integrals. The p integral basically gives us uh, a normalization constant here. So we have uh, c double prime e to the minus beta mgz dz as our result.